Hi guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Let's take a look at the Pentax K1000. So this is the K1000 and it was sold from 1976 through 1997. That's 21 years. It ties with the uh, Nikon F3 as one of the longest uh, selling film cameras of all time. This is why it's one of the most popular film cameras ever. In fact, it was named by Time Magazine as one of the top 100 gadgets of all time, regardless of camera or other gadget. Uh, this camera has a bit of a cult following. It's, it's really popular with different groups of people. Probably one of the most famous K1000 owners is Drew Barrymore. She got a K1000 for her 25th birthday. And in an interview with uh, Entertainment Weekly, she recalled how she used to keep um, 3200 3, speed film in her K1000 at all times. Uh, that way she'd be ready to go if uh, she goes to like a party or something and she's taking photos in, in dim light. The K1000 would sometimes make what she uh, called happy mistakes or some unexpected result that she thought was uh, really cool looking. Okay, so anyway, besides celebrities, the K1000 is widely used in schools for teaching photography. The reason for that is it's such a simple camera, right? It's, um, it's an ideal platform uh, because you actually, as a teacher, can teach photography instead of ha having to teach how to use the camera uh, because uh, the camera has just about like zero learning curve. It really doesn't get any simpler than this. The K1000 has a shutter speed dial, up top here within the shutter speed dial you see the ASA film speed setting and then of course you've got your aperture ring on the uh, on the Pentax lens itself and that's literally the only controls on there other than the shutter release and the and the film advance and, and film rewind knobs um, the K and K1000 denotes the the bayonet style uh, Pentax K mount which was released a year before the K1000 itself was released. And then the 1000 in the name just simply denotes the 1 1,000th of a second top shutter speed. The models with the Asahi Pentax name there, instead of just saying Pentax, it says Asahi Pentax. And then you've got the uh, Aoko logo, Asahi Optical Company, on the uh, prism housing. These were the ones that were built in Japan and are considered to be better uh, quality because they have more um, more metal parts versus a lot of plastic in the in the subsequent um, uh, run that I think they built in China. The camera is extremely well built and has a really well deserved reputation for durability. It's um, it's a full size camera, okay, so it's not like uh, an Olympus OM1 or a Pentax ME or ME Super. It's a little more the size of a like a Nikon F3 or Nikon FE or uh, like a M6 somewhere in there so it's a full-size camera but it's not heavy at all and it functions really really well all the the buttons dials and everything have a very positive feel it just exudes like a really great engineering in this camera um, everything is nice and tight all the tolerances the the way the knobs move they're very clicky they're very solid there's nothing you know jiggling around loose on this camera so it really does make you feel like you're using a, a well-engineered piece of equipment albeit a very basic one. Its simplicity is really one of the most uh, appealing aspects of this camera and actually one of its uh, greatest strengths. The K1000 gets completely out of your way, allowing you just to focus on the subject at hand, whatever it is that you're, you're taking a picture of. It's a completely mechanical camera with a clockwork uh, shutter mechanism uh, that's versus an electronic one. And I'll show you what that sounds like if I put it on a slower shutter speed, like one second, and release the shutter. And you can hear those clock gears grinding away. Where if it were an electronic um, uh, uh, shutter, then you wouldn't hear that noise at all. You just hear that from uh, mechanical cameras. The LR44 battery that goes down here in the bottom plate is used strictly to power the exposure meter. It's not needed at all to uh, power anything else on the camera. It's a completely mechanical camera that you can take photos with without a battery in it. The uh, camera doesn't have an off switch, so anytime the battery is in it and the lens cap is off, just like it is right now, battery's in there, lens cap is off, then the meter is on. So if you leave the camera on a shelf for a month like that, 
uh, more than likely you're gonna you're gonna uh, you know deplete the battery. The Pentax K1000 really is a very simple camera. So let me just kind of give you an idea of the features that that are not on this camera, okay? And then we'll talk about what it does have. So the K1000 has no film reminder window or film reminder sleeve that allows you to put the box top of your film in there so you can remember what you've got in the camera. There's uh, no mirror lockup. There's no split image uh, focusing screen, although you can get uh, in the SE model, which this is not, it would say SE here, you, that one does come with the uh, split image uh, micro, uh, screen and a microprism collar. Uh, SE stands for special edition. Uh, no motor drive or any of that kind of stuff, no major accessories, no data back, no bulk film bags. Um, uh, like I said, it has no off switch, it has no self timer, it has no shutter lock, it has no uh, ability to uh, create double exposures, no depth of field preview button or capability. Um, don't know why you would want to do that in the day of uh, Photoshop, but uh, if you do, there is a workaround where you can actually um, take the first picture, um, and I'll just give you a quick demo. There's no film in this one, but you take the first picture, and then you hit the uh, film rewind uh, release button here on the bottom plate, and making sure that um, I guess ahead of time before you hit the button, you make sure that the uh, the film is nice and tight. Then you take the second picture and make sure you've pressed the button at this point take the second picture uh, and this time when you advance the film or all you're really doing is cocking the shutter the film won't advance it when this button is pressed and then you can take the second photo and or you can forget all that and just use Photoshop and superimpose your pictures more properly You can kind of hit the lens release button and start twisting the lens and you can watch the the aperture close there you see how that's happened inside there the aperture is closing but now your lens is you know it's very loose so I never use depth of field preview okay it does have a really nice viewfinder Okay, the K1000 viewfinder is, is nice, big, and bright, and it's got a very simple needle uh, center, a, a needle that you center for proper exposure on the right side. If your needle is near the top of the, the gap, the opening that the needle travels through, if it's at the top of that gap, then that's going to be one stop over, bottom of the gap, one stop under, and center, of course, is what the K1000 thinks is proper exposure. So if you're, you know, you can survey your scene and kind of determine uh, how far off uh, from each other the, the bright and dark parts of your picture are and thusly can determine a, a correct exposure. Very simple system, but you can actually use it in a pretty sophisticated way. So while we're on the topic of the meter, quite frankly, this is not a great meter. It's a center weighted system, uh, but it only has a sensitivity range from three to uh, 18 EV, that's uh, EV stands for exposure value. So as such, it can easily fall out of um, range and be incapable of metering a dimly lit uh, scene uh, using uh, you know just available light. So it's not a real sensitive meter and it can get to the point where it just can't give you any feedback if, it's, if the scene is too dim. And if you're using like a 50 or ISO 100 film, you run into the possibility where the camera just can't figure out the exposure. Especially, you know, not so much in the daylight, but more so in available light uh, when you're not using a, a flash. The K1000 has a reputation for overexposure, and my copy here certainly does that. Okay, this camera fully overexposes by about two stops um, pretty consistently. The shutter doesn't move as quickly as it did when it was new, and I guess none of us do, right? Um, but uh, for example, the the one one thousandth shutter speed here is probably closer to one five hundred, one five fifty, or something like that, and which obviously would cause it to overexpose. And like I said, mine does it really consistently, so I can correct it by just uh, dialing in uh, uh, two stops of ISO. 
So for example, if I'm using a 400 speed film, instead of putting 400 on here, I'll put uh, 640, which is the notch between 400 and 800, and that'll give me a uh, perfect exposure. And truthfully, even when it was overexposing by two stops, um, it really wasn't a problem. You can just dial down the, the exposure in your scanning software and you're good to go. But if you want more accurate exposure, just you can just dial it in once you figure out how far uh, overexposed your, your camera is, your, your particular K1000 is. Okay, the film advance on this camera is a ratcheted type, and um, which means you can do like a double stroke. To check the battery on the K1000, you simply rotate the shutter speed dial to the bulb setting where you see the big green B, and uh, lift in and rotate the uh, uh, ASA dial to 100. Then look through the viewfinder and you should see the, the needle go all the way to the top if the battery has a good charge. And it, it should go to the top and it should stay there. As you can see here, the K1000 has a little indicator next to the film advance uh, lever that uh, turns red when the shutter is cocked. The frames on the, the film strip itself are always just exactly spaced, which is, uh, you know, shows good engineering. I, I do have some cameras that give you erratic gaps between the 35 millimeter frames. So it's kind of nice to have a camera that's really, really consistent uh, with the, the space between each particular frame. And that becomes relevant when you're scanning. If you're using a dedicated 35 millimeter film scanner, then it's good to have a consistent gap between each frame. That way the scanner will read the, the film properly and it won't start to like overlap from frame to frame. So that's a good thing. The film rewind knob right up top here, there's got the little arrow to tell you which direction to, re to wind the film. And it's got an R to let you know it's the rewind knob. But uh, it also, like most cameras, pulls up and allows you to open the film back. And I'll show you that real quick. All right, that's actually already open. Okay, so the chamber here that holds the film is nice, clean, nicely engineered. Um, Pentax uh, brilliantly used a tongue and groove uh, system. The film back here fits inside the groove on, on the back of the camera, sealing off the light perfectly and never really needing um, any kind of uh, uh, foam or anything, which inevitably always leads to light leaks. So it's good that this camera doesn't have foam. Um, you know, backing here that would end up uh, possibly deteriorating and then leaking light into the film chamber. Along the top of the, the front edge of the focusing screen, there's a strip of foam that is simply in place to absorb the shock when the mirror uh, hits the top where it meets the focusing screen. And that little piece of uh, foam did start to deteriorate on this particular camera and on another Pentax that I've got as well, same thing. So you get a lot of these little bits of foam that made their way onto the focusing screen. I cleaned that up and I kind of brushed off the uh, with a just like a paintbrush the foam just to knock any loose uh, chunks of foam off of the uh, off of the little shock absorber thing. And it's been clean ever since. It's that's been like six months ago, so I, I really haven't uh, had any problem with that. But just you know, just a little. A little something for you guys to know if you're uh, looking at or if you see the particles on your K1000. The bottom panel here has a threaded uh, metal uh, tripod socket. It's got the uh, film rewind release and it's got the the um, LR44 battery cover which can simply be opened with a coin. The front has a PC sync socket right here and the lens release um, uh, lever right there and to to put the lens on there or release the lens you simply press in on that that lever and then twist to the left and you can you can line up the red index with uh, the red dot right there on the camera I mean it's a it's a lot easier just to, to line up that white dot the white bump with the with the lens release lever or lens release button the k1000 is compatible with pretty much any k mount lens um, they, they come in a couple different flavors. The, uh, the Pentax M, which is, this is actually one of, it's a, it's a smaller lens that is well suited for, uh, for this or for like the Pentax, uh, ME or ME Super. Those were really compact uh, cameras, much smaller than, than this one. But, it, uh, this particular lens looks great on this camera as well. Uh, the Pentax A lenses have a locking aperture ring with the little A at the end and a little button that just locks, um, the aperture ring for, for uh, Pentax cameras that uh, 
have shutter priority or program modes uh, that you know that control the aperture ring electronically so you need to kind of lock it in place um, but they're all compatible with the K1000 even the autofocusing ones are compatible uh, rule of thumb really is any K mount lens that has a um, an aperture ring locking or otherwise can be used with this camera uh, Pentax makes some of the the best glass um, ever really they're you know, every bit as good as Nikon Olympus Canon uh, you name it they make some superb lenses uh, this 50 millimeter f1.4 uh, it, it's officially it's the um, SMC Pentax M 50 millimeter 1.4 and uh, this is one of the best 50 millimeter uh, prime lenses I've ever used it's a nice bright wide open f1.4 it's got perfect bokeh the uh, out of focus uh, like light points that, that show up as little like balls basically in the in the background are absolutely perfect um, they don't have like that strong ring around them which kind of makes uh, the the bokeh a little more unpleasant this one has nice wide open bokeh it's soft all the way through it's probably also one of the sharpest maybe with the exception of uh, the Summicron the lenses alone are reason enough to pick up a K1000. So the K1000 is not only a great camera for students, but also for someone who's maybe contemplating getting into film photography, or even for a, a seasoned film photo enthusiast such as myself, um, and you know, or anybody that enjoys a nice, uh, easy to use camera and, and really just wants to focus more on photography than than you know, messing around with buttons, dials, and switches, and menus, and so forth. Um, now, it is true that this camera would still be a very simple camera if Pentax would have bothered to put a self-timer uh, on here. And given that this camera was probably owned by a lot of folks that would very likely be taking group photos or family photos and want to include themselves in there, it would have been nice if they did that. They didn't. You know, so it goes. All that being said, I thoroughly enjoyed using... Uh, this camera. I have confidence that the photos will look great, uh, of course due to these great lenses, and the camera is just so, so simple to use. It's not a perfect camera, of course, I mean, which one is, uh, but it has plenty of appeal to a lot of people, myself included. I, I really didn't think I'd like this camera as much as I do, I've had it less than a year, um, but it's probably why it's uh, it's been so durable in the market and why it's been sold for such a long time, because it's just a really basic really usable design and that's really a, a big part of the uh, appeal anyway guys thanks so much for stopping by please like subscribe if you haven't already and click on that bell icon so you'll know when i upload a video this is eric with the film photography channel go out and get the pentax k1000